Hey, it's Mike again. We're getting there. We're almost getting to the MEP portion. Got a bit to do, but we're almost there, so... Still, uh... Plugging away at the, uh... The cigarettes, too, which isn't really a good thing. We're gonna get there. But... Due diligence dictates that we continue on with creating area plans. Area plans are views of the model used to calculate, define the two-dimensional spaces within the model according to prescribed calculation standards, but with the added ability to customize the area boundaries. The software allows you to create as many area calculation schemes as you need to depict in the design. Area boundaries can exist only in area plans and can be either manually placed or automatically associated with walls. If they are automatically placed, the areas within them will be calculated based on the BOMA standard. BOMA Area Calculations. BOMA stands for the Building Owners and Managers Association. Widely used in the United States by architects, developers, and facility managers alike. It was created to help standardize building development and spatial needs. BOMA uses its own set of standards for calculating areas that, the, that have some nuances related to exactly where the area boundaries between spaces fall. Depending on the area type property, you can find more information on BOMA standards at www.boma.org. The default project template includes some predefined areas. To add to the list of available area schemes, access the expanded room and area panel in the architectural tab of the ribbon. And then click area and volume calcula uh, calculations. So go to architecture, get out of the uh, sheet, go to, uh, let's go to the second floor, go to architecture, room and area, area and volume calculations. When the Area and Volume Computations dialog box opens, choose the Area Schemes tab shown in figure 18.4, which is right here. Here, you can add as many new area schemes as your design requires. For each area scheme, you can create associated plans, schedules, and area boundary layouts. However, be careful not to add too many superfluous area schemes on larger projects because doing so can degrade performance and file size and increase file size. Create a new area scheme by clicking the new button. By default, this will be a rentable type plan based on BOMA calculation rules. You will see a new area scheme in the list. Click in the name field of the new row and rename the scheme usable area. It's a scheme. Click OK to close the area and volume computations dialog box. Now as you can see, If I undo it because the hand is quicker than the eye, I didn't see it happen. So let me double check that again, huh? No. Area scheme. Area measurements based on the standard method for measuring four. And rename this to the scheme to usable area. A lot of dialogue boxes, I know, and, and I, listen, I've been through some of the videos that I made. I know there's been some stumbling blocks, but I promise you, as God is my witness, I practice so much. The more you practice, inclusive of myself, you know where to go for the answers. You'll know where to go for the answers. You'll be able to structure your queries better when you're looking for solutions with the software platform. Uh, if If... If you're looking for a particular solution to a to a, a problem you're having with the software, you'll be able to find it if you know what you're looking for. If you don't, you're going to be searching down paths that return um, information that you're looking for. And if the information that you're looking for is structured uh, improperly, you're going to find that information, which is not necessarily what you're looking for. So. Again, this book will help you, if not initially, down the road, 
It'll help you down the road. Listen, we all have to live in, in spaces. We all take up space, right, in this world. Our person takes up space, right? So this isn't just for architects, engineers, owners, and developers. It, it's for a whole host of folks that want to uh, expand the knowledge. And a handful may want to become pros. You may look at this video and say, this isn't for me, me, Mr. Lipinski over here. But you see, this transcends other industries. This particular type of instruction is applicable in so many different industries and in so many different sectors within the economy, globally, as a matter of fact. So, again, these are the things that will help you enhance your education. And knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And what you do with that power is purely up to you. Because uh, the thing about power is it's absolute, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. It does. So keep that in mind. I mean, you, you, people achieve these levels of expertise and, and how they behave with, and uh, how they utilize and they yield that power. It's always going to throw a monkey wrench in the plants. And I don't have to really tell you much more than you probably already know you already know just walk around uh, walk around the country walk around the globe you'll see there are just folks that are just disingenuous and and they they live a life filled with malicious intent and they, some exist in positions of power so hopefully this will help balance you and help balance that okay so let me uh stop with my uh Sociology lesson. Sociology plays a part in this. I can build rowing. You can build low income housing or luxury housing units with this. Let's let's break it down to that rudimentary function. All right. So, in any event, let's move on to continue the exercise. I got to get my ass up out of the cubicle and drop thirty pounds. I'm cognizant of that. I've got grill issues. I've got car issues, all those issues. But there is a method to my madness. There is a method to my madness. I could be charming. That's a tool. In any event, I'm not going to brag. I'm not an alpha male. I just had a conversation with my son. I get so much information from my children. They're a plethora of knowledge. And they know everything. They know everything about them. My kids are at that age that they know everything. And the ones that are really younger than the older ones don't act that way yet, but they're getting there. They're getting there. So any of you folks out there that are, that are expecting, expect a lot. <laughs> expect a lot if you're expecting, I'll tell you that. For those of you who don't know me, I have seven children. Seven children. The Brady Bunch, if you will. Except it's, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all for me. But on a personal note, if you ever want to really get to know me, um, invite me out for a drink. Invite me out for a drink. In any event, we'll get there. We'll get there. Once we achieve our nonchalance, right? Again, as engineers and, and, and uh, architectural draftsmen and electrical design engineers laying out uh, equipment, and we, don't, we don't have that luxury of, of uh, coalescing the client, right? We don't have the, the luxury of coalescing our clients. So we have to allow the uh, powers that be to maintain those relationships. We just have to sit in the, in the rear with the gear and let all of those players uh, utilize their uh, social skills to coalesce uh, clientele. We don't have those skills, remember? We're just goofy geek engineers. What would we know about style and charm and attraction and maintaining client relationships, and drawing in clients, and maintaining a clientele. What would we know about that? We're just dumb, geeky-looking engineers, man. <laughs> I'm sorry if I seem a bit uh, malcontent over that, but I have seen so many of these folks so many account executives, 
But they all come running home eventually, right? They all come running home. Hey, listen, can you come with me to explain the technical stuff? Because they're going to see right through me. <laughs> Don't get me started. Again, if you're an account executive and you'd like to do business with a sales engineer, then you better start sharing the fucking money. <laughs> you're getting a commission. Cough some of it up our way. How about that? If you're reaping all the benefits from your accounts, and we're the ones explaining how they work, when you cough up some fucking cash, what do you think this is? A fucking charity? Anyway, I apologize. <laughs> to continue this exercise, you will need to create area plans for your presentation. You can create an area plan for either of two locations. One is located on the room and area panel of the architecture tab. The other is located on the create panel of the view tab. Follow these steps. From the architectural tab in the ribbon, find the room and area panel. Click area. And then click area plan. You are prompted with the new area plan dialog box shown in figure 18.6. Now remember, you can't create an area plan without, you can't create an area without having it on an area plan. And I actually stumbled before with that. You won't be able to put it on a floor plan. Unless the floor plan is an area plan. Now here's the uh, little bit of a trick because when you ordinarily, let me just cancel out of here. When you start thinking about views, uh, you're, you're inherently going to go back to the create uh, view uh, panel in the view ribbon and say, okay, well, I need a floor plan. And as you can see, this floor plan reflected ceiling plan, structural plan, plan region, area plan. And you may uh, think that this may be where you start, but then when you need to create an area plan, you're like, oh, no, I can't put an area on it. So um, it's buried within the, uh, the other uh, panel, the architectural panel. Uh, and just so you know, I, I hate to deviate, but notice a scope box over here. That's a very, very important tool. Uh, I don't know if this is going to touch on it, but we're going to get there. So there's a lot more in MEP that's going to uh, require us to utilize different tools. And then we're going to get into structure, huh? We get into steel, rebar, and all that good stuff. We've got so much to do. And here's the thing, you know. Some of us just don't get paid to do it, you know. Some of us like it. We just like to do it, you know, and, and that's the thing. We just like to do it, <laughs> you know, which is a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. In any event, at least, you know, you, won't, you know that when you do get the contract, you won't be sitting there watching the clock all day because you're miserable in your job that you hate going to. And when you're a kid, it's okay. You get the cash, you meet some friends, you socialize. But after 30 years in a dead-end job, it'll start to take its toll. And then once, those arteri once the arteriosclerosis starts to set in, and then the stress starts to build, you'll start to understand exactly uh, what a, uh, a maximum stress, stress fracture is. And you'll wish you spent the time studying your ass off. So you had something to fall back on when you couldn't lift up that box that weighs 51 pounds. In any event, if I told you, I'm going to sprinkle in all sorts of tips and tricks. All sorts of tips and tricks. I'm not necessarily uh, an architect. I'm something else. All right, so, and I'll let you make that decision as to where I fit in into the building information modeling collaborative process. <clears throat> so the dialog box is closed. Let's go back to the new area plan uh, in the architectural tab area, area plan. And you'll see we have some, uh, some options here. We have gross building, rentable and usable area, level one, two, and then roof one and two. From the type drop-down menu, choose Usable Area. While pressing the control key, select both level 1 and 2. Oops. 1 and 2. 
Now, notice the checkbox. Do not duplicate existing views. If I turn, if I check this box off, um, ordinarily what you would see was that if there was any existing view, you wouldn't see it in this dialog box. So um, that's not the case. So let's just do what the book says, Mike, instead of trying to uh, reinvent the wheel. Automatically create area boundary lines associated with all external walls? Yes. Click OK with the option to automatically generate area boundaries for exterior walls. Because you selected more than one level, you receive a prompt for each level for which a plan is being generated. Go ahead and click yes to generate the plans automatically. Okay, now, as you can see, boom, if I undo that, <laughs> this was already created for us. It is what it is. This creates new area plans under a new node in the project browser, area plans, usable area. The name in the parenthesis always, will always be associated to the area calculation type you used. The name in the parenthesis will always be <laughs> word association, parenthesis, a parent's thesis. <laughs> I'm almost done with my sabbatical. Just have some patience, please. Please have some patience. Lots of Jews go on sabbatical. Why does everyone look at me like I'm nuts? Don't discriminate against me because I'm a Jew. Now, before I got perturbed, <clears throat> the name in the parenthesis will always be associated to the area calculation type you use. In the project browser, select both level one and two on the area plans usable area. Right click. Well, it didn't create it. I must have somehow undid it. See, when I go off on a tangent, when I throw my little tantrums, let me make sure I get back here. There it is. Oops. Okay. One click back. It only created level one, if you notice. I didn't, I didn't see create level two. Oh, that's because I got to go that way. Silly boy. All right. So back to the business of architecture. Arcs. Short now. I'm nuts. It must be nuts to want to do this all day long. Select level one and two on the area plans usable area. Usable. Lots of people are usable. Some like to use people for things. In any event, select both of them. Right click and select apply view templates in the context menu. Ah, oh, now we're getting to something that I like. Let's see what we got. Well, in this project, we don't have many. We don't have many. We have uh, architectural elevation, plan, presentation 3D, presentation elevation, reflective ceiling plan, architectural section, area plan, export to civil engineering, site plan, site section, structural framing, elevation, structural framing plan, structural section. Some of these uh, um, templates you could sell. People sell them all the time. You could sell a template. You get a firm that's just starting up, just got the software and said, use it. Just, you know, could you use a little extra, you know, as a consultant? You go in, boom. How much? You can search it up on the internet if you want. You can buy, uh, you buy templates that are fantastic. Fantastic. Or you can make your own and do a lot of folks do, and we'll share them. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. In the Apply View Template dialog box, choose Area Plan. Now, I guess I should say this. If you remember, you know, throughout the entire volume of this text, we were always down the View Control Bar, and we were in the Project View, the View Properties uh, palette, and we're always setting this and setting that and, and getting it just to, to, to display correctly. The template now will override all 
most of those settings when you apply it. And a lot of the uh, view display, graphic display options, inclusive of view range and detail level and scale and all those things, are going to be overridden now by the view template. And you won't be able to access them. So in some instances, what you could do is you can apply a template and then uh, apply it back to none. It will maintain the, the template um, settings. And then you'll then be able to access the visibility graphics for the, for the view in the palette and the view control bar, which had been prohibited by the application of the template if you wanted to tweak it along the way. Now, this is where it gets a little goofy, though. If you start to manipulate this template and this template applied to other views, it will affect every view that this template applied to. So, again, just like anything, it uh, has that bidirectional associativity. It's important to understand that. Ah, my coffee. Mm. It's 9.30 where I'm at, Eastern Standard Time. I got a, uh, a text, I don't know if it was spam or not, from someone in India that had answered an ad, and they had said that they had a, oh, they were a computer engineer, they had $100,000 to invest in uh, infrastructure in the United States, and they wanted some guidance on what, what I could do to help them. And... Uh, I was thinking about it, you know, saying to myself, well, what could I bring to the table? And the only thing that I can bring to the table is, be honest with you, um, I'm sure these gentlemen or, or ladies have a, a robust education, or I'm assuming they do. The only thing I can bring to the table is I, I, I feel that I, I, I can, uh, I have a relatively good grasp of the English language, and I'm not being facetious or uh, trying to mock in any way. It's just that I do know, from my experience, that a lot of folks come over here and, and they aspire to, 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 to achieve the American dream, and they do run into certain hurdles when it comes to the language barrier. And, and I can bring that to the table uh, as, a, uh, as a mouthpiece, as a mouthpiece, as a mouthpiece. Now, again, I've always had to sell myself over the course of my career. Uh, selling products would be second and fifth. Uh, when you have to sell yourself, it's a whole other ballgame. It's a whole other ballgame. And... Again, now in the condition that I'm in, it's become very, very difficult over the last mill since since the uh, World Trade Center, uh, not the 9/11, but since I was working for Leo McGovern Bovis on the uh, World Trade Center site. Once this happened, it was all downhill from there. So I had to persevere about 10 years of a judgmental, um, what's wrong for bias based on my appearance. You know how facades are. You're, uh, people are going to judge you by the way you look and by the way you speak. And sometimes, most times, you're going to probably uh, incur the, the wrath of the uh, discrimination. But if you're savvy and you're slick, you could use that to your advantage. If someone's going to constantly assume that they're your superior because of the way you look, then you could allow them that luxury. And that's good because there are certain things you can do with somebody that, that does that to you, that uh, decides that they're going to master you <laughs> because you're, you're just an eyesore. Now, I'm going to bring up a little bit of a story before I keep going further. Here's a perfect example. It's ironic, though, because this particular um, tract of education comes from Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken. I had an engineer that used to work for me, a gentleman by the name of Paul Schoenberger. One of the smartest guys I had. He's a really, really smart guy. But Paul, unfortunately, was very, very messy. He was a messy Marvin. He was pig pen from, uh, from the Peanuts. He just was very messy. And, again, he had the same grill issues and the unironed shirt. He would smell like a dirty dish towel when he came into the office. And you know how people are around the water cooler with folks like that. You know how they're treated. But he was a very intelligent kid. He, his mom was a secretary at Stevens Institute of Technology. And um, she had got him in there, I guess, on a scholarship or whatever, or maybe a reduced uh, tuition. And Paul went through Stevens and got his electrical engineer. But, you know, I remember one day we were, we were talking about some uh, OC, uh, um, was it OC2? Yeah, I think it was, no, it was an OC192 we were deploying. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. And, and I remember Paul had gotten the reins to run the project. And I remember saying to Paul, you know, hey, Paul, you have to do this. And I remember Paul saying, I've been waiting for this my whole life. 
And Paul was just so, so happy to be able to do what it is that he wanted to do. He, he loved the job. He loved the electronics. He did. All the engineers I had on my staff when I was a manager over of, uh, for that company I'm not going to tell you about, uh, where we were transmission, we were working on some transmissions. Uh, they, they, uh, they did well. They did well. I'm not going to name names, but uh, he was so happy. He went, he's waiting for this his whole life, he said. That's what he said. You know what? That's the day my job got easier. Anyway. Hats off to Paul. I hope he's doing well. Anyway. But the, how they treated him is what pisses me off. Nobody wanted him. Nobody wanted him in their department. Because of the way he looked. So they sent him to me. Let me catch my place. Now I need a cigarette. It's like the Animal House, the Animal House episode at the Omega's uh, frat party when uh, Flounder goes in and they keep panning him off back around to the couch where Muhammad and all those geeky guys were sitting on the couch with Mandy Peppers. They kept pushing them over to the couch to hang out with the rest of the nerds. I don't know if you remember watching Animal House. Same scenario. And it happened so much in, 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 in modern day uh, office politics. It happens the same thing in politics. Nothing's changed. You want to learn about engineering? You want to learn about architecture? Watch Animal House. It'll teach you everything you need to know about people. It's how people behave. Same way at City Hall, too. Same thing. Any City Hall. Harper Valley fucking PTA. Anyway. We don't have the exclusive rights to do anything. We may, we may not be licensed, but you may not be qualified. Or you just may not be good enough, which is even better. So, I don't know. Some days I want to put you in the gutter out of work and make you beg on a corner for forgiveness. And then there's some days I want to lift you up and uh, uh, make you aspire to be great. But when I look back and I think about certain folks and how they were treated, not to mention how I was treated over the course of my career in certain instances, but when I look back on some of the younger some, some of the younger folks and how these fucking people in the positions of power treat them, it fucking irritates me. And I want to go and I want to just clean house at some of these firms. I do. I like to go in there and just with a, with a fucking broom. You're going, you're out of here, and so are you. Huh. I could tell you stories up and down. I have kept my tail between my legs, my legs, minded my P's and Q's. I went to so many companies, and you can't imagine some of the firms that I've worked with. I'm not going to brag, but let me tell you something. You want to talk about developers. I've worked for some of the biggest developers in the world. The biggest in the world. Bigger than you could imagine. And I'm not kidding, okay? I'm not kidding. I've been in Paul Allen's house, okay? I was in it. I gave him a DS3. I saw his Monet's, okay? I'm not bragging that, I, that I'm rich, but I've seen affluence and I've seen money and I've seen uh, some of the ways that these folks uh, can influence uh, economies with a, with a, a writing a check. They can, <laughs> they can write a check that'll just in influence the global economy, but with a stroke of a pen. And then just to look back and see after when your career starts to wind down, how these businesses walk around flaunting their, their prowess, it sometimes disgusts me. I should probably get into human resources. That would be my best bet. But I would send too many people packing. You, you probably wouldn't have a company left. I would come in and clean fucking house. In any event, I offer that up. If you're having some problems in the firm, and you need someone to, to work for you for a couple of months and then talk about it on Facebook, I'll be more than willing to do it for you. I've got nothing to hide. I do it all the time. People know me from Facebook before they hire me. And then they come in, then I get hired. <laughs> Look at it. They, they already know who I am before I get there. Because I'm not, I have nothing to hide. And you gotta see some of them, some of them are pissed when I get there. They hire me just to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's a small fucking world. I know I'm, I'm, laying my, I'm laying myself out there for that. 
I'm opening myself up for it. You think I'm afraid of fucking security? <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Don't get me started. Don't background screen me, motherfucker. <laughs> Don't you dare put me on some type of a list. That's your worst fucking bet. I'll make it so that you'll never fucking work again. <sighs> well, you kids. Okay, so, which template are we gonna apply today? Is Mike gonna be nice? Which mic are you going to get? Are you going to get left mic or right mic? Is the question, right? Which mic do you want? Which, what do you want me to be? Which hat do you want me to wear? Do you want me to be the caring, concerned, um, civic-minded, docile Mother Teresa? Or do you want me to be the douchebag that goes in and makes your mid-level management bowl a gasket? It's up to you. I can wear any hat you want. But what I won't do is commit, go in there and say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. I'm the new head guy in charge. That's not my style. I'd rather come in as just a regular guy. I'm not looking for grandiosity, but I'll let you pick. So I'm gonna come in as me, and then, you choose how you pluck my strings and you'll get what you get based on how you pluck my strings. If you pluck me this way, I'll behave that way. If you pluck me this way, I'll behave another way. It's just how I'm programmed to function. You know, listen, women are programmed to shop, right? <laughs> They're programmed to shop. I'm programmed to function a certain way as well. I could be your best friend or your worst fucking enemy. But even if I'm your worst fucking enemy, I'm just going to ignore you anyway. I'm just going to ignore you. I'm not really going to do much to you. I'm just going to write you off as somebody that's inconsequential to my development, inconsequential to my plan. I have no animosity. I, I don't hold any. I, I get pissed and I look back in retrospect and I say, well... That didn't work out well, and that person plucked me the wrong way. But again, I didn't go, I don't go to your company looking for friends. I'm not looking to make friends with you. Those days are over. I'm not, I don't go to work to looking for friends. I really don't. Years ago, I wanted everyone to be my friend. I wanted everyone to be my friend. Do you think I really need friends? Seriously. I'm not looking for positive affirmation. It's my legacy, I guess, which is what concerns me. It's my legacy. I guess after you rake through the, through the mud over the course of your life, you see yourself, hmm, well, listen, I gotta say something about it, because Christ's sakes, you know, within this vortex of uh, personal opinions, you uh, sometimes say, well, wait a second, I gotta put my foot down and put a stop to this, or at least go on the record and say, fuck you, who the hell are you to critique uh, my personality traits when uh, indeed it's blatantly obvious that when you point one finger at someone else you really should be pointing two fingers back at yourself so yeah I know this is a study of uh, view templates and uh, documenting your design well yeah I am designing uh, over the course of my career I've had to uh, uh, design <laughs> I've had to design so I'm still designing that's what I'm doing. Sakatoa, right? Sakatoa. And my thought process is, and I doubt it, my kids don't listen to what I said. My thought process is, let's say, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, I, I kicked a bucket. Maybe. My kids will say, oh, fuck, you know, now that I'm 30, you know, oh, oh, shit, you know, dad was, you know, dad wasn't as crazy as I thought. Um, maybe we'll go back and start reading some of the shit that he wrote and we'll get a better idea what the fuck's going on when they're up against the wall and they have to stand on their own two feet with no one to help them. 
that's the thing about independence. This is perfectly apropos for this particular time frame of uh, the year. Well, we talk about independence, and really, when we break it down, what is independence? I don't have a partner in crime. I don't have anyone I can rely on. I don't get any money. I can't go borrow money. I have uh, no one to, to rely on. Everyone needs someone to lean on, right, I guess, to a certain extent. But the only thing I've seen is everyone throwing leans at me, you know, <laughs> document after document after document. Listen, I could spend all my time over at 595 Newark Avenue just filing one lien after the other, and I wouldn't have a problem doing that. But everyone in life needs to have someone to lean on, and I have no man is an island, I understand that. But um, we're talking about uh, building usage and usable areas and rentable space. And, uh, you know, when you finally do uh, degauss from all of the uh, external stressors, you get into a, an environment where you feel relatively comfortable and you can be yourself when the whole time you've been faking it and having to act a certain way just to collect a check. You've had to accept all of the horseshit from the smoke and mirrors horse and pony show along the way, shoveling it spoonful after spoonful down your throat because you're just hoping you get that check. So you're 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 tolerating these these this false bravado and these ridiculous mid-level managers whose only job is to take the client out on their American Express corporate card. That's all they do. And they do it only because they do it with their personality traits. That's all they, they use. They don't necessarily have to know much more than, you know, money makes the world go around. You have to have money to make money. That's just how it is. You have to have money to make it. And uh, I, uh, I only stress this because I'm, I'm so in deep into the real estate industry <laughs> I, 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 I want to share this with you. It's something you're not going to learn in a textbook. I, I've been on both sides. I've been on so many different sides. Uh, you know, I, I chanted, I carried the Union flag. I, uh, <laughs> I've been down south. I've been to the South Pacific and all around the world. And uh, I've made some mistakes and I've seen people make mistakes. And I, I followed along and listened to everybody talk and talk and talk. And uh, I've taken it all in. And now that I'm pushing 51, I've just decided that it's time to, uh, to let you know that all those little abstract drawings that you've been seeing me post was just screen. Just to let you know of what colors were really fucking in front of my eyeballs. I was seeing red, man. I was seeing red. And uh, I'm not in jail. I, I haven't hurt anybody yet. I haven't committed an aggravated assault. And let me tell you, if anybody needed an aggravated assault, I can name names. But I, I've refrained. I've refrained from uh, committing any of those heinous crimes. Those heinous crimes. Pick interior walls. That's the thing about this text. It, it sometimes it has to make me giggle. Because it emulates life and, and the, the terminology, um, you, there are so many usages of a word. If you Google any word, you'll see uh, in, within, in the, the parts of speech, there's many different meanings. A word can be used as a noun, a verb, an adverb, an adjective, a prepositional phrase, a conjunction. You know, I've sprinkled all of this in over the years and all I've gotten back was that, oh, this dude's out of his fucking mind. I've tried to stress so much about how important education is and how important words are and how words can wound. I mean, Cher even says it, right? Words are like weapons. They wound sometimes. And I have listened and had taken so many uh, diatribes and, and verbal assaults over the course of my career, not just in the workplace, but a personal life. Haven't we all... Haven't we all become victims to that? Oh, did you hear what that one said about you? Did you hear what that one said about you? Well, having heard what someone said about you, hearsay is one thing, but having them say it to your face is a whole other story. And sometimes you take that home. <laughs> I, I have, and I make, I make mental notes of it, and, and, and in my mind, like, 
individual faces will flash in front of my, my eyeballs sometimes. And they, 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 it's, they make a lasting impression, right? Don't, don't certain people make a lasting impression in your mind? And you'll be going through your day, and sure enough, out of the blue, they'll just pop right back into your frontal lobe, into your psyche. And you're like, God damn it, I still haven't forgot what that motherfucker said. You know, and that's the funny part about psychology, right? You, it's almost like you're being haunted by the individual. They, they come back to haunt you with, with a word. I, I can, let's just say I came into your house, I, I said your mother was a piece of shit, right? That's the kind of thing that you may take around for a while. You invite me over for Thanksgiving dinner. I sit down at the table. I say, hey, thank you for, 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 for inviting me. But listen, your mother cooks like shit. And then you're thrown out of the house. That may last within your psyche for a while. You may remember that. Those few words that I said, you may remember those words. And they may come back and back and back to haunt you. And here I am. I'm back to haunt you. I'm still in Bayonne. Still here. I'm back to haunt. Back to the haunted house. It's the fucking Adams family. But I'm happier than I used to be. I used to be a very, very happy guy. Class clown. I used to smile and laugh and joke. My kids used to tell me that I was the funniest person they've ever met. But after been after just the, the weathering and the weathering and the weathering, you you start to you start to lose your sense of humor. And life is supposed to be fun. And I empathize with those that are never going to smile again. But I can't be one of them. I can't be. I can't. I don't want to be the one that goes out miserable because of any reason. I just refuse to be miserable. I don't want to be miserable. I want to live a happy life. It used to be a, a happy time. You remember when you were a kid? You know, hanging out with your friends and how, how life was. You know, when I see that my kids are smiling, they're happy. And they don't want to hear misery. They don't want to hear uh, the complaints of life. Because they're not, they're, they don't feel it yet. The pressure hasn't mounted. In some cases, the pressure will never mount. They'll get a head start in life, right? But not everyone has that luxury. Some of them are going to go through some hard times and have to face the strains of life. And I just don't want them to be beaten down by it. I don't want life to beat them down to a place where they, they, they lose their smile or their youthful zeal or their youthful vigor or their ambition or their, their, uh, their achievement persistence. I don't want that to happen to them. And you can say a lot about me, anyone that knows me or anyone who's watching this on the sneak. You can say whatever you want, right, to your buddy, your, 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 your pal or your your friends, and, and say what you want. But one thing you can't say, and I won't allow it, is that you're not going to say I don't persist to illustrate my point. I do. But I'll get to a, a passage in the book, and, and I'll insist that I, I uh, explain it a different way. Existing in an office environment? Existing in an office environment. It's, uh, it's a bit different when your organization stays in a cohesive unit and remains that way for the duration of your career than it is in, in an organization that rotates folks uh, into teams <laughs> and they have to coexist together and then they rotate them back out to a different team. Whereas a huge international organization may have a little bit more trouble with that. How do you get a group of individuals into an office to make it lucrative, profitable, and beneficial not only to the organization, the shareholders, but as well as the individual? That's the challenge. The challenge here is to create an organization that is a cohesive unit that will stand the test of time and that's the business I'm in. Uh, I'm in the business of cohesiveness. This is a collaborative environment. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to prepare yourself before I set up the rest of this network. 
there's absolutely no reason why I can't deploy a few more workstations and, and have the model just sit here. I could just not let you see the model, right? I could be the host of the model and, and, not, allow, and not invite you to the project, right? I do have that luxury of sending out the invitation to, to participate in the project. I have that luxury too. Or I could wait for another invitation to another infrastructure project. I've even tossed around the idea of maybe taking this English that I have and, and taking it abroad overseas to utilize it in an environment where they, they may appreciate the fact that I speak English, the Queen's English. Because again, it could be falling on deaf ears. Now, I heard a radio uh, ad this morning about a company I used to work for that everyone's mad about. They're pissed about the customer service. I'm not going to say the company, but they're pissed. They're pissed. And um, there's, a, <laughs> there's a certain level of expertise that you have to establish and you have to maintain it in order for your organization to stand the test of time. I've got kids that are in the workforce now. I have to worry about the corporations that they work for. <laughs> As if I don't have anything better to do. I used to have to only worry about where I worked. Now, I've got a handful of firms that I have to, I have to monitor the behavior of those companies. As if I've got nothing better to do. It, it's a lot more rest assuring when I can, I can rest better knowing they're within a good organization. If they're not, then I have to get involved. I don't want to have to get involved in their organizations. Do you think I have time to go down the corporate ladder, down to that level, and start to sh straighten these fucking people out? I don't have time for that. I have things to do. I have bigger fish to fry. So whoever is with an earshot, please, please, pretty please, can you clean up your backyard? I'm begging you. I don't want to have to continually go into these organizations and have to be a bit abrasive. It's a lot easier just to write them a check and tell them to go down the fucking road. Now please do your due diligence so I can get back to the business in the matter of hand. There may not have been, you may not have known me. I may, I'm not who you think I am. You may have known me years ago. I'm not the same guy. Things happened along the way to change my point of view. And not all of those things were negative. Some of it was positive. I had met certain individuals and certain organizations along the way that put and made a huge impact on how I proceeded forward from that particular time. I, I tried to emulate certain folks and I watched why I should have seen why they behaved the way they did because of the individuals that I ran into along the way. I was paying attention to my superiors, some of them, and some I had to just ignore, some I had to ignore, and some I had to manipulate. All right, now, I'm going to end that there. Before I apply this template, I'm going to leave you there with that diatribe. That's a long story. And I promised myself I would get through this. We're so close. We're this close. We're this close before we get into HVAC and mechanical piping. Before we get into mechanical piping and HVAC and plumbing. And then the coupe de grace, right? The coupe de grace, the structural. And then the coupe de grace again, the electrical. And then, oh man, I, I saved the best for last. Shh. Then we're going to start talking telecommunications. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep that one close to the vest. We're going to save telecommunications for the end, right? For the end. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll bust out load data, design assistant. We'll, we'll teach them that. We'll teach them about directional couplers. 
and mini bridges and amplifiers and taps, right? And nodes, cable simulators and pads and EQs, shit like that. Erbium and earth doped amplifiers, shit like that. Maybe we could do that down the road and cross connects and uh, RJ45s, punch down blocks, right? And manholes, shit like that. But we haven't gotten there yet. Let's get through this and then we'll get into, you know, whether or not you're going to get a dial tone to your fucking you know, your leasing office so you can have a TCO and the fire alarm can use its auto dialer or you'll fucking never open your fucking building. Hey, like them apples.